I think we will, we will continue immediately um, with the Kronan pharmacists. You know, Sweden is a long country and it's very different weather-wise, not least, uh, even though we're a small country up north and down in uh, south, which of course affects everything from seasonal disorders to, uh, yeah, to needs, to flus, all kinds, allergies, everything will be affected. And uh, Tina Jallops, who is the re uh, replenishment manager of Kronan, uh, her responsibilities include then ensuring that over 300 drug stores in this long, long country carry the right amount of pharmaceuticals and merchandise at the right time with a range of products that consists of more than 25,000 articles. Quite a challenge. Please <laughs> fill us in how you solve that. Welcome, Tina. Thank you. And welcome everyone to this session that will be a lot about change management. I don't know about you, but I love change management and I love to talk about it. Because I think it's really interesting how you can, with very small means, actually enable people to get from one situation to another. And in all projects, I believe that change management is important. But for our project in particular, it was crucial because we really needed to let people to help people let go of the control that they had had for so long so that we centrally could gain some control over our inventory. Let's start by imagining that you go to work every day, as you always do, to your pharmacy somewhere in Sweden, knowing exactly what to do. You monitor your customer demand, you stock up on the merchandise that they have a request for, you know their patterns, you know their illnesses, their treatments, you know what they prefer and what they expect. But you also adjust the parameters in the system so that you can give the best possible service without increasing inventory value too much. And you take great pride in knowing your regular customers because this is your job, this is what you do, you know them so that you can stand up to your local competition in the area. But then one day, someone tells you to stop. You should just stop doing what you have been doing for years, because there is a system that can do this instead. And guess what? The system can do it even better. So should you just let go? Should you just not care about the customers anymore? Should you go home? Can you trust a system that you don't know so much about to actually do the work that you have been doing for so long? And do you want to trust this system? Well, usually when implementing a system of any kind, you go from doing something one way to doing it a different way. In this case, we were asking our employees to go from doing something to doing nothing at all. Not quite nothing at all. But they should spend the time that they had taken to adjust parameters in the system and monitoring their inventory to spend that time on their customers instead. More time to give service. But how do you actually provide the best service possible when you're no longer in charge of the offering to the customer? You're no longer in control of what products you will actually sell in your store. If you don't trust the system to do the work that you have been doing, at least as good as you have been doing it, then the odds of you letting the system go to work instead of you are not that great. So this led us up to the most important question that we actually had in this project. What do you need in order to trust a system to do your work? First of all, you need to understand what you can achieve in the future. So right from the start, we were very open with our project goals, which were to decrease inventory value by 15% and increase service level at the same time by 1.5 percentage units. You also need to understand what decisions you can influence. So right from the start, we said we will centralize fully. No exceptions. Every pharmacy will be using the system. But what you can influence working at a pharmacy is the solutions that we will put into the system. 
you need to understand how you can influence. So what we did here was that we had very close communication with all our regional functions, such as regional managers, regional IT support, our sales coaches, so that they could be a channel into the project. So if you work at a pharmacy, you know that you can speak to your manager, and the manager can speak to regional IT support or regional manager, and they will actually bring the concerns and questions into the project so we can find solutions. Then you need to understand what's in it for me, as you do in all projects. It's always down to the individual. So here we thought this was pretty clear cut. Easy, more time for the customers, less administration. Woohoo! No. Because if you say that you will all of a sudden have more time that you haven't had before, people start worrying about downsizing. So at the same time, we were talking about how great this would be. We had to make sure that we were very clear on that it will not mean downsizing, just better service for the customers. Then you need to understand how the system works on a relevant level. Not everyone needs to understand the details. I have Eric here as project manager because not even I know all the technical details in the system. But you need to know enough so you are comfortable performing the work and trusting the system. So we gave a lot of information and we held demo sessions for different stakeholder groups, always targeting the information to that specific group of people. But finally, you need to understand how the system works in reality, and there's a big difference between having a project team saying that, hey, this system is great, it's going to work, or having your colleague who's in exactly the same situation as you are telling you that, I tried it, and it really does work. So we ended up having two pilot phases when, with in total 20 pharmacies before we did the full-scale implementation. So what was this system that we chose? Well, Kronas Apotek chose SO99 Plus by Tools Group, which stands for Service Optimizer 99 Plus Percent, because that's what we're aiming for. We chose this system mainly because of its great flexibility, because we need to have a system where we can create our own solutions based on our market and our specific needs. Because the pharmaceutical market is still a mix of retail and a still heavily regulated area. It also optimizes each product on each sales entity. And as you can see, we have pharmacies from Trelleborg in south to Kiruna in the north. We have 304 pharmacies at the moment. Smallest ones are basically not even a store. It's a hole in the wall where you can tell the person what you want. And they're usually located inside of health centers, of course, very heavy on prescribed medications. Then we have the largest ones located in large shopping centers where the customers have a demand for different products. And they're also located right next door to other large retail chains that also are our competitors. So very different situations and we need to make sure to optimize on each sales entity. Finally, the parameters from SO99 are sent to our business system, which was a big advantage for us, mainly during the implementation, but of course ongoing, because there wasn't really a big change for the pharmacies or for other people interacting with sending or receiving orders. It was just an add-on to the system that we were all used to working in. So let's have a look at the project plan. It was pretty straightforward. We started out with the development phase from April last year until the summer, basically. After that, we went into testing phase. And we started a pilot in early October with first one company and then soon after another eight that went live only with prescribed medications. And after testing that for a while, the same pharmacists went live with over-the-counter medications and traded goods. So they were live with a full assortment. 
Then in January, we decided to launch pilot phase two with another 11 pharmacists going live with the full assortment right from the start, just like they would in the full scale implementation. And from mid-March until May of this year, we had the full scale implementation with approximately 28 pharmacists each week. But during the time from the first testing phase, we have had continuous development and testing of new functionality and releasing of new functionality. And that's something that is still ongoing and a big part of making the system work even better and better for us. But although this was a pretty straightforward project plan that we have probably seen a lot of times before, this was the change curve. So let's have a look at what happened in the sales organization. When we started the development phase, pharmacies were totally in denial. I mean, they didn't even know about it, so they didn't even reflect on that a change was coming. And frankly, we wanted to keep it that way. So the only thing we did was that we communicated that our IT manager bought a system. Frankly, no one cared because that's what the IT department does. They buy systems. And we wanted them to stay in this denial phase because we didn't have the answers yet. So we didn't want to raise a lot of questions and uh, didn't have answers to provide for them. We were confident that we would find the solutions, but we weren't there. But of course, after the summer, we needed to communicate with the pharmacists. So we started communicating that this change was coming, we were open with the project plan, and we were sending invitations for involvement, basically asking them to review the FAQ that we had prepared. Not everyone working at the pharmacist, but certain stakeholder groups. We had phone meetings with the pilots. Basically, we had that actually even during the development phase because we wanted them to be one step ahead and feel like they were involved from the very start with the first nine pharmacies, I should say. But one thing about SO99 is that, just like other systems, it's depending on the input that you put into the system. And one of those inputs are the planograms that show you what should be displayed in each store and in which volumes. And Previously, our pharmacists, they have had planograms and they were supposed to follow them, but at the same time, they know their customer best. So they will also choose some products that we didn't know that they were selling because their customers asked for them or they thought that this would be popular in their area. But when we had to do a review of the planograms and see that the pharmacists were following what was set up for them, uh, they realized that someone's gonna tell me to stop selling these things and I will no longer be in charge of this. So of course they got frustrated. But then as we moved closer to implementation, something else happened. We were actually communicating solutions to the issues that they had raised, saying, well, I'm not gonna be able to do this, how will this affect my customers? And all of a sudden, we came up with solutions and sometimes, if you think that you have been doing your work perfectly for years, and someone says, this system can do it instead, you're somewhere hoping that this change will not occur. You will still think that I can do this better than the system. So of course, a lot of people fell into what we call the depression phase. Realizing the change is coming, but not really willing to let go and to adapt to this system. So that's part of the reason why we had the second pilot phase. We had it because we had a lot of new functionality and we also want to monitor the effects that it would have on inventory value and on the workload at the pharmacies when we went live with the full scale implementation. But we also wanted to show everyone that this does work. So in the beginning of the year, we had 20 pharmacies live with the full assortment. And all of a sudden, curiosity took over. They talked to their colleagues and they wanted to know more. And they saw that, hey, it is working. Okay, I wanna be part of this. 
So we encouraged asking questions. We had more meetings. We were available for the sales organization whenever they wanted us to be. We attended their meetings, etc. And right before implementation, we asked the regional managers to rate their pharmacies. Go first, go in the middle, or go last. Because we wanted them to be a part of the implementation plan, and we wanted them to rate their pharmacies according to how they thought the pharmacy manager would act in a change. Would the person be the one standing on the front line saying, hey, I knew it, it does work, it's great, and pull the other ones with them? Or would it be someone who's a little bit more reluctant to change and feel like, no, I'm not there yet. So then they would take those pharmacies lost. And what happened was that when we came to implementation phase, a decision had been made. And the regional managers were actually lining up, asking us to take their pharmacies first, giving us good examples of why their pharmacies should be the ones getting the system first. After this, you normally have something called integration, when the new situation becomes the standard and is no longer regarded as change. But what we can see now, some months after the implementation is complete, is that it is real difficult to reach approximately 2,200 employees. We did speak directly with all the pharmacy managers, approximately 230. But a lot of our employees, for some reason, they received the information, but they didn't reflect on what it would actually mean. So right now, a lot of them are actually moving into frustration phase. And we can see that because of the support questions we still get concerning a lot about, why don't I have this product in my store? Why can't I have these parameters instead of these? And they're still in there looking in the system, trying to adjust it themselves but of course they can't. A while back, I heard someone saying that we didn't receive enough information. So I actually reviewed the very extensive communication plan that we had had. And I realized that I wouldn't have done it any differently if I would have to do it again. We had the intranet site set up where they could constantly find new updated information about the project. We had all the stakeholder groups involved. We had news articles, FAQs, question and answer sessions, etc. But this is the normal path of change. Just because the implementation is complete system-wise doesn't mean that you can end the change management project. So that's where we are now, trying to find patterns in our support questions patterns that can help us to find new rules to set up in the system so that we can actually help all of the pharmacies at once instead of only helping one at the time. So as you can see, our journey has just begun. And the real challenge is never the system itself. It's always to enable people to adapt to the new situation, and in this case, to let go of their own control. And as I was saying, it's all about trusting the system. So let's have a look at some of the questions that needed answers so that our employees could feel confident and actually trust SO99 to do their work. So let's pretend I work at a pharmacy and we know what our customer wants. So usually we have some products that we display in more areas than is in our planograms. How can we make sure that we will keep getting enough volumes to fill up these extra displays? Well, as I was saying, it's crucial that you follow the planograms. Because otherwise, SO99 doesn't know what to calculate the parameters on. So the parameters that we have in the system are basically based on visual minimum, expected sales and lead time to next delivery. And of course, the visual minimum is only for the mer merchandise that is displayed in the customer area, not the prescribed medications. So what you can do is that you can turn to us, and we can make sure that we create another planogram and add that one to your store. 
So that way you will actually have the merchandise supplied in the right volumes. But how will the volumes to fill up the campaign displays be secured? Well, we make sure that the campaign merchandise is arriving at the store at the right time and the right volumes based on the campaign size that we have in the system where each pharmacy is categorized in a certain campaign size depending on usually the store size itself. And this will be done through a temporary increase in the minimum parameters. And this increase will be removed approximately one week before the campaign ends, allowing the volumes to fill down so that we will not have a lot of stock in store only because we had it on display. And I should also mention that SO99 can learn from previous campaigns and can also exclude these temporary increases in sales that are generated. And back to the seasons that you mentioned. It is a long country. And of course, we don't have the same season start at the same time all throughout the country. So how will the system know when the allergy season starts in different parts? Well, we added a reason code. So we have classified the pharmacies according to where in the country they're located. And we have also defined some pharmacies that have their peaks during the summer or winter. For example, pharmacies located in specific summer or winter resorts. But some prescribed products are essential for pharmacists to keep in store, even if the sales volumes are low. How will we secure that they are available? And of course, in our business, where we are required to have a lead time of 24 hours, this is a really crucial question for our employees. So we're able to add a minimum service level to those products so that even when SO99 is optimizing according to uh, well, both value and service level, uh, these products will not be, so to speak, punished. They will always have this minimum service level, at least. At my pharmacy, we always make sure to have a certain product in stock for a specific customer. Can we keep this up? That's also a very common question because of the control factor. Well, we have created logic that in the system it works the way that if you sell something enough times during a certain time period, that product will be supplied to that specific pharmacy, even if it's not something in the planograms, for example, prescribed medication or the service assortment that we have, which is all the range of products we have that are not connected to a planogram for that pharmacy. But really, the answer is no. We will not keep something in stock only because you think that you might have this person come back and buy this. But at the same time, some pharmacists, they have deals with physicians, for example, to keep something in store. So then, of course, we are able to add exceptions if we really feel like it's necessary and a benefit. Then we have something called generic substitution. And it's regulated by law, and it has to be complied with. And it means that every month, a generic product is chosen and has to be offered as a substitute to the original prescribed. So how can the system handle generic substitution? Well, we created substitution groups, where the group itself gets parameters, and the group's demand will automatically be allocated to the substitution product or to other specific products within the group. At my pharmacy, we have a customer who always picks up four packages at once. How will the system know that? Because there's really no point in the customer coming in asking for four, and we have one, and the next day we'll get another one. So as long as the customer pattern is clear enough, SO99 will actually learn this pattern and be sure to supply four packages. But if a customer asks for a product that we don't have, 
Normally, the demand is calculated by sales transactions. So how will we know that there has been a demand? Well, in our business system, we can add something called missed sales. So that way, this will be added to the sales transactions when the demand is calculated. So I spoke a lot about how you will be able to trust the system. But nowadays, I also talk a lot with the organization about that you can trust the system when the system can trust you. Because like I also mentioned, we have something called input. And we all know that if it's not good enough, the outcome will be so-so. So we have the pharmacist, we have SO99+, and we have the business system. SO99 provides the parameters to the business system that calculates the orders and sends them. But the pharmacy need to have the correct inventory on hand. And might sound easy, but you do have people shoplifting in our stores, and you can have other things happen so that you actually have to be in there every day adjusting the inventory on hand. We also have the planograms and the campaign information that tells you what should be displayed where during certain campaigns. And we have 12 campaigns every year. So if the pharmacists have these, they have the correct inventory on hand and they follow the information we give them then the parameters will be correctly calculated and the orders will be correct. So did we actually manage to lose control in order to gain control? Well, we still have some people clinging on. They're not quite there yet. But what's important to remember with change management is that it doesn't matter if you keep repeating the same information. You have to find new ways. So we actually have to keep digging into why don't they let it go. And it's not always the people asking the most questions who are still here with the blue. It's the people who are quiet, who have already given up, have come to terms with that, OK, they don't really care. They don't think I did my job because there's a system here instead. So you have to be pretty proactive throughout the process and actually find them and find ways to see in the figures, we're talking about proactive, how you can see if a pharmacy is not quite there so that you can get them the specific help they need. But we have more and more people just sitting back enjoying the ride. And what happens when you let the system go to work? Here's a common pharmaceutical at one of our pharmacies. And you can pretty much see when they went live with SO99. And what's also interesting is that you see that they have never run empty, but their highest inventory has pretty much been at the level of their lowest peak before the implementation. Where are we now? The implementation itself was a great success, and the inventory value is down and the service level is up. We're at a higher level in service level than we had ever been before. And I have three people in my team working with SO99. So three people are actually making sure that 304 pharmacists have the correct products at the right time in the right volumes. We are still working on continuous development for new functionality. Like I said, we're trying to analyze the questions that we get from the organization, trying to find out how we can put this into the system so we make it easier for the pharmacists and we de don't need to deal with the questions. And then we also do simulations and live testings, something we're able to do in SO99. So before we launch something, if it's an increase in service level that we want to try out, we can actually see the effects that we, it will have on our inventory values, so we can decide to what extent we should launch this. 
if we should do it for some pharmacists, for all of them, if we should have a plan on how many each week that we can take. And we're going from reactive support to proactive actions. We still have a lot of questions, but we're trying to help several pharmacists at once by digging deeper into them than just handling case by case. Finally, some lessons learned. Well, early information to the stakeholders was, of course, essential, um, as well as long pilot phase. And we didn't have a plan for two pilot phases. It was something that we decided to have with the development of new functionality along the road and also the commitment. So, I mean, it was very important during the whole project phase that we were flexible enough to see the need in the organization and to adjust to that rather than just keep on going the rate that we had planned from the beginning. Then we have the clear statement from the start regarding the centralized inventory. And it made the discussion solution focused because it's very easy to get stuck in the discussion whether this is possible for my pharmacy or for my pharmacy. Depending on the size, depending on the customers, everyone wants their specific solutions. So we didn't really get into that. So the decision is made. This is the way it's going to be. But if you want to be part of it, you can bring the input on how you want the system to work for you. Also, the flexibility that I was talking about was of great importance. And the great support that we had from Optalon and still have when it comes to developing new solutions. And finally, the change management. It has to be ongoing long after the implementation is complete. So that's what we are focusing on now. Thank you. Exciting. And you, you said that uh, if you would have done this all over again, you would not have done anything differently. Is the or? Well, not looking at the communication plan, mm -hmm. because it was very extensive and we were reaching out to everyone. Uh, it's not possible to think that you can reach all employees at once. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, during the implementation, I was uh, working as a project manager in the sales organization, so I was actually in the steering committee for this project and a stakeholder, uh, which is very interesting now in my current position because I'm able to form my team to be better equipped to handle the support questions in a way that I would want them to be handled. So maybe I would have prepared the team earlier to start analyzing the questions, to find mm. the new solutions a bit quicker. There were obvious patterns to be detected. Yes. Oh, yeah. mm. Yes. Uh, of course, in, in pharmacies, you, you have risk management in, in your cells because that's part of it. To, would that make it more difficult, would you say? So if, if you make it there, you make it anywhere? <laughs> Uh, System-wise, yeah, I think this is a very difficult area yeah. because of the regulations mm -hmm. and, well, generic substitution mm -hmm. where you have a demand for a specific product, but someone else tells you that you shouldn't sell this, you should swap it for another product when the customer is there. How do you make sure that you have this product in store and not only this one? And media loves to scandalize if something happens and to to uh, moan that the customers are really poorly treated now, and uh, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I think our customers are more demanding than a lot of other customers, mm -hmm. because you expect your medication to be there when you come to the pharmacy, and you're sick, and you need it straight away. And from uh, also, as you mentioned, the media is on it. Yeah. Questions from the audience? Or comments? Uh, reflections upon? the experience. Um, have you had to replace any of the persons that have been too reluctant or have uh, has everybody more or less complied? 
Um, well, that's um, something for the regional managers to yeah. handle. Yeah. But uh, yes, I mean, it has become obvious that some people maybe did not want to be in the position that they had had because especially working at a smaller pharmacy, mm -hmm. if you feel like this is what you live for and Your identity. you yeah. love, I mean, some people loved managing the inventory. They thought it was really fun mm -hmm. and because it was a way of providing service for mm -hmm. the customers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there have been instances where people have changed positions or so because the job changed. Um, but I think mainly once they realize that they can trust the system, it is a better way of providing service because they do have more time for the customers. But it is, as you say, an ongoing dialogue, so to speak, between yeah. uh, because you need to improve the system all the time and to be even more alert. Uh, otherwise, the system, I if it feels too rigid, I guess it won't. I it'll be hard yeah. to trust it. Yeah, and what they can do is that they can place manual orders. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, I think uh, our employees, they're very creative because it's all about getting the product to the customer within 24 hours. So they will find the loopholes. <laughs> so, yeah, there are ways around it. So we have to balance, you know, what should go through us and are there actually instances when it's okay to place a manual order. For example, you can always do it when you have a customer in front of you and you don't have the product in store. Then you have to place a manual order connected to that customer. Did you foresee this from the beginning, that you would have to have a manual parallel Yes, line? yes, we knew about that. Mm -hmm. But since we can't really close that way of placing orders, it's also possible to place manual orders without having the customer there, which are the ones that we're trying to get on track and saying that, you know, let the system work, mm -hmm. try it out. Eric from Optilon, is it anything you would like to add that you think can be useful for the audience to understand in, in this process? Or Tina has covered it all? No? Something it looks in your eyes as if there's something. If I can please get a microphone. Or maybe not. We d we're not filming this. No, you can, s you can talk. <laughs> Supply you with the right tool and and to get the tool to work. But is it unusual to need two pilots in in two different levels? Is that rare that it happens? As Tina said, that I was a surprise. I don't, I don't think. I mean, you have to keep in mind that it's 300 pharmacies. So it's there's a lot of a lot of pharmacies, and I think it was good to practice practice the rollouts. So yeah. it wasn't only the uh, a lot of things had to be in place when you do when you did the rollouts, and I think it was good for for everybody kind of tra pra practice the complete rollout. And also worth to mention from a, from an IT point of view, from day one we had the full model. So I mean from day one we m inside SO99 we made a full optimization. So we had the 300, all, all the items and all the stores were alre already in the optimization. So from an IT point of view, uh, to go live with a pharmacy was, was just checking a box, <laughs> so to say. Piece of cake. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you for filling us in. Thank, thank you. you.